Good evening, Team Our Victory. Brittany McMillan here with our Wednesday webinar. Um, tonight, it's all about networking. And so as Beachbody coaches, we are in network marketing. But sometimes when we sign up as a coach, it can feel like, okay, I don't really know what network marketing is. I just kind of liked working out. I liked sharing my story. I like social media, but I don't know a thing about network marketing. In order to have success in this business, you, yes, need to do the sharing and you need to be active on social media and you've got to be working on your own health and fitness. Absolutely. Totally. But when you kind of um, get to a point where you want to expand and grow this business to become maybe a steady income or a full-time income, those are possibilities, but you have to get very comfortable with networking. And so tonight, we're going to talk all about networking. Tonight's topic, Network 101. So what is networking? What does that mean? Well, it's basically just sharing your story for the world to hear. It's about talking to people, opening up dialogue, letting people know what you do, offering solutions to their problems. That's what networking is in this business. So as a network marketer, your job is to really connect with people and talk to people. So if you're already listening to this webinar and you're already thinking to yourself, I probably don't connect and reach out and talk to as many people as I should, you are in for a treat tonight because this is definitely, definitely going to help your business moving forward. If you want to move forward in this business, get a piece of paper and a pen out because we are going to go, you're going to take notes, um, and I just can't wait. Okay, so here's the thing. Finding quality people to work with, to help on this journey, it's a skill. There are so many people out there. There's so many people out there. But notice how I said finding quality people. You want to find people that need you. The type of service that you have in health and fitness and support, those are the kinds of people you're looking for. But you're also looking for people who relate to you and kind of get you on your same level. Because if you're working with people that you just don't see eye to eye, it's not going to work. Even if they buy a challenge pack from you, it's never going to work. Maybe they might sign up as a coach. They're going to quit pretty soon because you guys just don't see eye to eye. You're not very compatible. So it's a skill to find these quality people. And so you've got to start getting comfortable reaching out to perfect strangers on social media. And we're going to get into that. Successful people in this business make it part of their job to talk to people. So again, like I said in the very beginning, if you aren't having these conversations, if you're not reaching out to people daily and meeting new people and adding new people to your friend list on Facebook or new followers on Instagram, you are not building your network. So what does that mean? Well, I was always kind of like, a little bit confused because in the three vital behaviors, it says invite, invite, invite. Well, that to me was really intimidating. It was really intimidating because first of all, I don't always have something to invite them to. Like for example, today, I just started my last challenge group two days ago. I'm not really inviting people to join my challenge group because we already started and my next one's not going to be for about three weeks now. So I'm not really reaching out to invite people today. So in the beginning part of my business, when I wasn't inviting, inviting, inviting every day, I felt like a failure. I felt like I wasn't moving my business forward and advancing it until I realized that invite, invite, invite doesn't really mean to physically invite somebody every day to something. It means network, 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 talk to people, get out there and talk to people. Now, obviously you want to be talking to people about products and about the coaching opportunity and about your challenge groups and just those things that you offer, your services, right? But not every conversation is ever going to go there. Not every conversation, um, some conversations you just make new friends. Some conversations never even open up. And some conversations do go to your challenge groups, to the coaching opportunity, and to things like that. But it's important that if you don't start with the networking, you'll never get to the invitations to those groups. So tonight we're just talking all about networking so that we can kind of get rid of that fear of invitations because I was really, really afraid 
in the beginning times of my business to just get out there and invite people, I didn't really know what it meant. You've got to understand that people are not going to come to you. You're not going to get lucky one day and then there's just 30 people that want to join this challenge group of yours or that you post that you're going to have a challenge group and everybody just immediately signs up. That would be fabulous. That really would be fabulous in a perfect world. But in a real world, which we live in, you have to reach out and you have to talk to people. You have to open up conversations. You have to let them know, hey, I've been thinking about you lately and I've got this challenge group going. Um, is it something you'd be interested in? And that's it. And, um, and we're going to talk through how not to make it so creepy and feel like strange because there is a process. You're not just going to go out and randomly cold invite a ton of people into your challenge group. You can do that, but I'm not sure if your results are going to be all that amazing because these people are just going to think that all you want to do is sell them something. So what we're going to talk about tonight is some tips for networking. And we're going to go through what an active candidate list looks like. The first, I want to say, yeah, the first three parts of eight parts, I'm going to talk about eight different things tonight. And the first three have to do with making your list. And the rest of them are how you then use the list. Okay, think about that. Almost half of the steps tonight are in preparation to make your list. So again, if you're sitting here listening to me and you're saying, I don't have a list. What, a list? What, she's ta- what is she talking about? A list. You've got to understand how important a list is to work off of an active list. We're not talking about, I want you to sit down and write a hundred names and then over the next month, go through those hundred names and, and reach out to them. I'm talking about a list where once one person is off that list, another person is added to that list. Every day the list gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so we're talking an active candidate list. Um, It's basically a surefire way to know that you will never run out of people. One of the biggest concerns when people sign up as coaches is, I don't know enough people. Well, that's great. Today you might not know enough people to be a millionaire or to have a downline where you could be diamond rank. Maybe you don't know enough people in your immediate connections, but we're gonna talk through how you branch out and how you use this active candidate list so that you never, ever, ever have to fear that you're running out of people to talk to. First tip before I dive into the first thing, get a notebook. So my notebook is is small. This is not something that I write anything in other than names, okay? So when I, friend request somebody and they and and they confirm they they allow me to be their friend so cool i'm so lucky um when that happens their name goes in here their name goes in here that way if i'm having a day where i'm like i don't know who i should talk to today i open my notebook and i got all these lists of people that have accepted my friend request in that notebook also can go your current friends on facebook So now let's get into number one, the list. Everyone makes the list. That's point number one. Everyone makes the list. So when I just told you to go to your Facebook friend list and write down all those names, transfer all of them into that notebook, did you just think to yourself, well, I'm not going to transfer that person. Uh, I don't want to transfer him and I'm not going to transfer her. I'm not going to write their name down. They're never going to buy anything. Did you kind of feel that way? I do that. I mean, I still, every day, I'm like, I count people out. And we've got to be so careful about that because sometimes the people that you count out actually need it or they hit a point in their life where you are the one that can solve their problem. And if you, if you count them out, someone else isn't going to, and they're going to get that customer. I've seen it time and time again where somebody's like, ah, they're not probably interested. And then, A week later, they've got 21 Day Fix and they're posting about it. And I'm like, what? I didn't think they'd be interested. We can't let our own ideas, our own perceptions, our own opinions dictate that list. So everyone goes on the list. Let's talk who everyone is. Every family member. Write them down. I don't care if it's a six-year-old cousin or nephew or whatever. I don't care if they're not of age. Because here's the deal. And when I say of age, like, you know. 
there's no age for beach body, but you know what I mean. Like they're not in your group of, of age. Like maybe you have a grandmother that's so old. She's never going to do P90X, right? Granny, she's not doing P90X, but put her name down because when you put granny down and you put down the six year old nephew, all of a sudden other people start to come to mind. And so those people spark, they spark more for the list. So don't count anybody out, even if, even if they're really truly not going to be your target today. Because here's the other thing, that six-year-old nephew is going to grow up and one day be in college and one day be older and maybe one day have kids and realize that he kind of put some pounds on and maybe one day he needs your services. Don't count them out. Put down every friend. So again, <clears throat> easiest way to do this, go to Facebook, get on that friend list, and write everybody down. This is something that I used to do before I had this particular notebook. But what I would do, instead of writing down the Facebook ones, I would scroll through every day, and I would, you know, they're kind of in a certain order for the most part. It doesn't change too much. Um, usually it's, I think it's ordered by, um, you know, people who have more interactions with you versus people who don't interact with you as much on your feed and whatnot. But I would go down and, okay, they're already a customer of mine. Okay, they're already a customer of mine. Okay, they're a coach of mine. Oh, I haven't talked to this person in a while. Message them, okay? Put them on the list. So that's another way you could do it. Instead of, if you don't want to transfer all of those friends over to the notebook and you are really organized and you can keep track of who you've spoken to, then by all means do that. But use that friend list. It's, it really comes in handy. People that you forget about, like, oh, I totally forgot I went to high school with you. Because not everybody goes through your newsfeed every day. Remember that. Okay, every friend, right? So we wrote down every friend. Write down every foe. All the enemies, everybody who's a hater, everybody who picked on you in high school or whatever, shot you down, write them down. Because you never know when that person's going to need you. Put down the people who are not necessarily your friends um, and write them down. Again, this is a business of helping people. And so as we mature in this business, as we get older, a lot of times we start to kind of like see some of the stuff that may have been petty in the past or, um, you know, like there's plenty of people I went to high school with that I didn't care for them in high school and I'm certain that they did not care for me either. And here we are now connecting many, many years later because we are more mature now. So maybe they were your foe at some point. Maybe at some point you guys didn't really see eye to eye or get along, but you never know. People change, right? Just like you're changing and trying to become a better person. So they could be as well. Okay. Think of organizations you've been a part of. For me, you know, my color guard organizations, uh, drum corps organizations, anything that I did performing wise, just think through all those organizations that you've been a part of, maybe your university where you went, things like that. Also, think about groups you've been in. Um, maybe on Facebook, you are in other groups that aren't challenge groups and things like that. Maybe you're part of another group, like a running, women's running group of Michigan. I don't know. Um, and if that's the group that you're part of, go through there and start looking to network with new people in there. Add people to your list of who you could talk to. And then think of your jobs you've had. Maybe current jobs you're in and the coworkers you have at that job. Or think of past jobs that you've worked at and those coworkers that maybe you are still close with or keep in touch with. And think of them. Put them on the list. Okay? Keep in mind that you don't have to talk to everyone that's on your list. Okay? Again, six-year-old nephew, 98-year-old granny. We don't have to talk to them about Shakeology. But it helps, again, to get those juices flowing because when you think of the nephew, maybe you forgot that across the street from your nephew, there's, he's got this really cool friend that he plays with all the time, and that person's mom has been looking to get into shape. So you see where you think of the nephew, maybe the nephew's not the one that you're going to target, but maybe that sparks somebody else down the line. So everyone makes a list. Do I make myself clear? I hope so. All right, number two, make friends. So now we're still on our list. We are still making a list. But number one is that everybody gets on that list. Everybody that you can think of gets on that list. Number two, 
make friends now with their friends. So think of like your mom. Go on Facebook, go onto your mom's page, click on her friends, and start making friends with your mom's friends. Some of them you probably already know, just maybe you're not friends with them on Facebook. Maybe family members, maybe you're, you have a sister-in-law or a brother or a sister or whatever, and they've got friends that maybe they went to school with, they went to college with, that you are connected. You see, you're connected with them somehow. So it's not, these people are not so creepy, quote unquote, to reach out to because you have something in common. You, hey, I noticed that you're friends with my sister. Did you go to school with her? What did you study? You see, you have a way to talk to these people because you have a commonality of a mutual friend. Obviously, Facebook gives you ideas for friend requests, um, and you can see you know, the, the amount of mutual friends you have for any given person. And obviously, the more mutual friends you have, the less creepy it becomes. So you could reach out and target some of those suggestions that Facebook gives you. But you, you have a commonality there and you have a conversation starter if they are somebody you already know. Um, think about your husband or your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, spouse, significant other, whatever. Think about them. I've been doing that a lot with Charles, with his friends, and reaching out to some of the women that he went to high school with, some of the women he met in college, not like that. Like we're talking women that like he was just friends with, <laughs> but reaching out to them and you know, Hey, I saw, I see, you know, my fiance, um, you know, I love, da, 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 I love your dog in your picture, whatever. We'll talk about that in a second, but it gives us a reason to kind of fill the gap there. It's not so nerve wracking to be able to say, Hey, thanks for accepting my friend request. I see that you know my fiance. How do you know him? that easy. Um, clients, friends, referrals, ask any clients that you have, Hey, do you know anybody that would be interested in doing this next challenge group? Um, could you, could you give me their names and maybe I could reach out to them on Facebook? By all means you could do that. And your coworkers, friends, your coworkers, family members. Okay. Think of how the spider web just kind of goes outward. You know what I mean? Um, we, we get so caught up sometimes in just the immediate friends we have and the immediate family and the people we surround ourselves with day in and day out that we oftentimes forget how this truly expands pretty stinking wide. All right, number three. So we put everybody on the list. We didn't cut anybody. Now we're talking about their friends. We're making friends with their friends. So we're really expanding our list. Number three, constantly expand your list. It never stops, guys. It never stops growing. So like I said, I didn't give you an assignment that I want you to go write 100 names tonight and then just start working. No. I want you to write all those names down. That would be a great jumping off point to start your list. Go ahead. Tonight, tomorrow, make that a priority in your business to begin your list. But once your list is going, it's never going to stop. So let's say tomorrow I sit down and I give, I dedicate 30 minutes to making my list. 30 minutes to making a list. I'm going to go through, I'm going to write all these names down, transfer them, because I've never made a list before. So I'm going to dedicate a chunk of time, 30 minutes. I can even do it while I'm watching TV because, hello, like I can do that on my lap, right? I can write down, watch TV. So 30 minutes, I'm going to write down all the names that I can write down. Now, after those 30 minutes, obviously I'm going to be reaching out to some people and talking to them. But now let's talk about the next day. So that was Thursday. I spent 30 minutes making a list. On Friday, I'm going to send out three to five new friend requests. And those people, once they accept my friend requests, are all going to go on that list. In addition, I might be continuing to write people's names that I'm already friends with and people that I've been kind of thinking of as I go. So keep in mind that your list doesn't ever stop. It should never stop. Like I said, three to five new friend requests. So Facebook, you got to be careful because if it notices that you're doing too many friend requests and they think that they're suspicious behavior that you're just kind of spamming, they will shut you down and put you in jail. So you got to be careful because if you send out too many friend requests, you get bold and let's say you send out 50 friend requests tonight and then tomorrow you send out 50 more and let's say nobody accepts your friend request, which is odd, but let's just say nobody does. Facebook is going to clue into that, like, okay, this person's sending out a lot of friend requests. No one is accepting them. People might even mark you as spam if they have no idea who you are. 
So you have to be cautious with that. You have to really be careful with that. So what I say is three to five. And then what I do is if I do, if I do five, not, not everybody is going to accept the friend request. First of all, not everybody's on Facebook every day. Even though I'm on Facebook every day, that doesn't mean the entire world is on Facebook every day. Two, sometimes people just don't know who you are, so they're not going to accept, right? So people might not always be on Facebook, so you get kind of lost in the shuffle when you friend request them. And number two, sometimes people just don't, they're not comfortable accepting new friends if they don't truly know you. So that's fine. That's okay. So if I do five, let's say that three of the five say yes to me and two go by the wayside. Usually what I'll do is, again, like the following week, like Sunday or Monday, I'll go through my friend requests that I made the week before and I'll delete the requests from the previous week that have just been sitting there. If they haven't accepted my friend request after a week, two weeks, something like that, I get rid of it. I get rid of it because it builds up. And the more that that stuff piles up, the more that Facebook kind of like red flags, like, okay, what's this person doing? So keep that in mind. You don't want too many friend requests just sitting there. So three to five new friend requests per day is totally acceptable. It doesn't mean that you're going to talk to them that day. So I don't wait for like them to accept my friend request. And then I just like dive in and like bombard them with Shakeology challenge pack. No, not at all. Um, but you don't have to talk to them that day, but you need to find a creative way to stay in touch. So something that I've been doing is I'll friend request them one day. And let's say on Monday, I friend request them and they accept. Okay. Now on Tuesday, I'm going to make sure that I go to their page and like some of their photos on Wednesday. I'm going to, again, like what they post about. I'm going to keep an eye on what they're posting. I'm going to like it. I might even comment by Wednesday. Depends on if I think this person's super cool or not. Because guess what? That's the other thing. I'm in control. Remember how we said quality people? It's a skill. I don't want everybody. Because just as much as people don't like me, I don't have to like everybody. I don't have to want to work with everybody. So I'm going to be monitoring also to see if they're somebody that I want to work with also. Are they the kind of person that's going to be engaging in my challenge group? Um, do they have a positive attitude? If I friend request somebody and then I see them posting like cuss words and hateful things and complaining, we're good. Like I'm done. I don't need that person in my life. I don't. Not at all. We won't see eye to eye. And maybe later down the road, they've been so inspired by the positive messages that I'm pouring out on Run Your Happy Place, maybe something happens and a switch flips and they come around, and we can talk then. I don't unfriend them, but I'm not going to like scout them out. I'm not going to network with them anymore. They haven't passed my test. So Monday, friend request. They accept. Tuesday, liking a bunch of their stuff. Wednesday, I'm going to go back. I'm going to like a bunch of their stuff. I'm going to comment on it. At this point, I've kind of decided by then that, you know, test your waters, but by then you should be able to maybe reach out to them. So by Thursday, I can reach out to this person and send them a message. Hey, thanks so much for accepting my friend request and then form the relationship, which we'll get to in a second. But guess what? You don't have to talk to everybody. Just find a creative way to stay in touch with them. And Facebook, Instagram, it's so easy to find creative ways to stay in touch because you just like their photo, you comment on their status, right? You wish them a happy birthday when their birthday rolls around. Those are creative ways to stay in touch with people. Okay. Think about it this way. I know I said three to five friend requests, but let's just say you get two new people a day. Every day, on average, for a year, you get two new friends. That is 600 plus people that you will add to your network in a year. You've added over 600 people to your network in a year. That's pretty good if you ask me. And on top of that, think about five years. That's over 3,000 people that you've added in five years' time. So for you to say, Brittany, I don't know anybody or I don't have enough friends on Facebook or I'm from a small town, well, you are just not thinking out of the box. You're not. You're stuck. You are stuck in this narrow vision You've got to expand it and understand that it's really just that easy. Two new friends a day. That's it. Two new friends a day. 
All right, so that's making our list. We've got our list going and we're going strong. You need to make it part of a habit. So every day, it's got to be something that you do daily. Maybe one of the first things you do or maybe one of the last things you do before you go to bed, but it's got to be a priority every single day. Now, let's use that list. What do we do with this list? So I kind of brushed upon a little bit of stuff that you could do. Okay, but now I'm going to dive a little deeper. So number four, we got a network on purpose and with a purpose. So network with a purpose. Go out and actively meet new people. Engage with new people. So when you go out to the store, this is where kind of like there's a shift, a paradigm shift. When you go from like, we've talked about hobby coach, well, discount coaches, hobby coaches, and then our business builders, right? There is a kind of a subtle difference in the way you go out into public as a hobby coach versus a business builder. A hobby coach will go out into public and take care of the tasks that they've got to take care of that day. If they're going to Target, they're going to buy what they got to buy at Target. If they're going, um, you know, hiking, they're on their way to go hiking. If they sign up for a 5K, it's because they want to finish that 5K. That's a hobby coach. Totally fine. But a business building coach, a coach that wants to build a network and earn a very steady income, is going to go out and they're going to always be ready to network with people. So if people in the store ask you, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a beach body coach. I help people to, you know, get in shape and I support them and I encourage them. It's so much fun. Networking. Um, you know, asking people, oh, I see you're wearing, um, you're wearing a running shirt. Do you like to run? Oh yeah. Oh, I see. I see here you're eating well. Do you, do you follow good nutrition all the time? I mean, these are conversations that you can open up with people. You don't have to sell them anything, but you can network with people. You can network. So network with a purpose. Go out in public with a purpose. Now, does that mean every single time you go out in the public, you have to be working your job? No, but be open to it. Be ready to allow that to happen in your life. Don't shy away from it. Open up new conversations. Ask questions. Question asking is huge. So when we're talking about, like, any example that I've given you about messaging somebody on Facebook, there's always a question involved. I, I wondered if you noticed that. But when I do these, like, fake scenarios of how I would talk to somebody on Facebook, I always put a question in there. A question allows the conversation to keep going. If you don't ask a question, then the conversation can die out very easily. So I always try to place a question. Now, not every conversation, as the conversation goes, you know, you don't want to just be question, 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 question. It depends on the person. Maybe the question, or maybe the conversation isn't going in that direction. And, um, and that's okay too. But ask questions. Get to know them. And the questions can be about anything. When I say anything, I mean anything. But that's why it's important when you're, actively networking. When you get on social media with a purpose to network, not a purpose to scroll the newsfeed, a purpose to network. So I know that yesterday, Jane Smith accepted my friend request. So today, I want to see what Jane Smith is doing. I got to find, find out what she's up to. I'm networking with a purpose. I've got a purpose when I go on Facebook to find Jane Smith and to find out what she's doing so that when I go to open up a conversation, I have something to talk to her about. Hey, Jane, thanks so much for accepting my friend request the other day. I noticed that you have two beautiful babies. Oh, my gosh. How old are they? What are their names? Open it up. I love the pictures that you just took with your family. Where did you get those done? I mean, that's all it is. So you got to start by forming relationships and opening things up, but network with a purpose. You get on that Facebook it's got to have intention behind what you're doing. And again, I'm going to say it when you're networking with a purpose. So Jane, I, she accepted my friend request. We're buddies. I'm mildly stalking her on Facebook now. I'm networking with a purpose, right? I'm following Jane. I'm liking her stuff. I'm commenting on her stuff. I reached out and I messaged her. And maybe the conversation just ends that day or maybe in the next couple days it fizzles out. We never talked about fitness. 
We never talked about my challenge group and we never talked about Shakeology. That is okay. That's okay. All you're letting Jane know is that you are a real person, that you're a human being, that you are kind, that you're loving, that you're thoughtful, that you're pretty cool. That's all that you're letting Jane truly know about you. Because remember, before anybody's gonna wanna buy into a product, they have to be able to buy into you. So when you're networking with a purpose, you've gotta get rid of that idea that you've gotta talk about Beachbody right away. And that was something that, in my mind, it, it was really difficult for me to kind of, I felt like a failure if I didn't talk about Beachbody every time. And I think in the beginning that it was just such a wall for me that I had to get over that, and, and you know what? I don't know if other coaches out there would agree with the way that I'm saying this, but it helps me to push my business forward. And I'm not so hard on myself as a coach when I don't tell somebody about my challenge pack because I don't have to tell everybody about my challenge pack because that's not where the conversation is always going to go. On that note, number five, do not be a hunter. Don't be a hunter. And you know them. You know them. I know them. We see them on social media all the time. They pitch to everyone. That's all they do is they just pitch to people, right? They're pitching. If I get another, like, I'm a Jamberry consultant. Okay. Do my nails look bad? Is that why you messaged me? <laughs> like, I never know. Like, they're just, I don't know. I mean, I've never, ever, ever messaged anybody and said, I'm a beach body coach. Dot, dot, dot. Like, say something. No, like, who cares, right? Don't pitch to everybody. Hunters also don't care about people. So that's where I was talking about networking with a purpose. And I was joking that you mildly stalk people, but you have to know the people. You've got to know them. You've got to know your clients. I make it a very important, important part of my business to know my coaches and to know my clients. I want to know what their husband's name is. I want to know what their children's names are. I want to know what they do for a living outside of Beachbody. I want to know um, what their favorite food is. I want to know where they struggle and where they have success. I want to know what makes them tick. Like, what's their favorite thing to do? Do they like concerts? Do they like dancing? Do they like movies? I mean, the more I can connect with them, the more I form a bond with my clients and my coaches. And once you have a bond with somebody, it's just so hard to break that. And I think far too often, we're just so concerned with sales sometimes that we forget it's about people. It's about changing people's lives. So hunters, they don't care about people. They don't care about people. They just want to get that sale. And hunters, on that note, move quickly from sale to sale. They will get a sale and, yes, got a sale, check mark, and then they move on and they got to get another sale. And then they got to get another sale and they got to get another sale and they just get more sales. Sales are awesome. They bring us money. I'm not going to deny it. That's part of my paycheck. That's what makes me, you know, I'm able to buy food and put it on the table. But your sales, if you're only basing your job off of getting sales, the people who are buying those products are suffering because they're not getting the true attention that we advertise as Beachbody coaches. So it's not so much about the sale. We've got to get out of that sale mindset. So instead of being a hunter, let's think more about being farmers. Okay. What do farmers do? They cultivate things, don't they? They grow. So let's think about that. Farmers build relationships. Farmers build trust. The goal is never the sale. The goal is to educate people. Think about this. Your goal should not be to sell something. Your goal when you sit down is to educate people on why they need what you have. I never need to tell anybody about a fitness program if they need to lose weight because they need what I have. I have something that they need. So, in order for them to know that I'm the person they should come to and to trust me and to be able to believe that the products work, I have to share about the products and the programs. I have to try them myself. I've got to give my honest opinions. All of that matters, but I am simply just educating people on the programs and the products. I'm not saying buy Shakeology. I don't know if you've ever seen 
me post something about Shakeology and just buy it now, but I might educate people on what Shakeology does for me. Or I might educate people on what this workout has done in my life or in a client's life. So it's not about the sale. It's about the education of what we have. Get to know your products. Get to know your clients and what they need. And share about that and educate people. Because then when people need what you have, because they will need what you have, people need health. They need fitness. They need nutrition. People need that stuff. When, they, when it comes around and they finally like, click and they need what you've got, you've already educated them. They've been watching you. So the sale kind of takes care of itself because you've built a relationship, you've built trust, and you taught them about what you have. Put yourself in their shoes, which you can do easily because at one point you were a customer before you were a coach. So put yourself back in that customer mindset and the customer shoes. Do you know, like I, I kind of referenced Jamberry and people like throwing Jamberry at me. I, I use that as a reference because I've had that happen to me a lot of times and I don't think they care about me. I don't have any trust in them because they haven't built a relationship. They're not educating me on anything about, I, I could tell you right now, not a thing about Jamberry. I'm simply saying it because it's something that's happened in my life over and over and over again. It's a company that keeps coming back to like want to sell me something but I have no idea why I should buy that product and why I need it. I don't know why I need it. So the people who are doing this are not doing a very great job. So uh, put yourself in, in your client's shoes. There's a lot of people who are really sick of social media right now and sick of network marketers on social media because they just flood the newsfeed with buy this, join this, do this, and people are offended by that because they don't want to be told to do something that they don't want to do right? So if you put yourself in their shoes and you think about it, how would you want to be treated? Would you want somebody to be that hunter to come after you, to sell something to you? And then to kind of just like, I made my sale. That's why I did this. And move, they move on to the next. Or do you want somebody who's going to be there next to you? Because this journey is not easy. You and I both know that this journey is not an easy one. And if you don't have somebody who's going to willingly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, stand by your side and encourage you, it's not, it's not going to be a very successful journey. So we've got to build that relationship, build that trust, be the farmer and cultivate those relationships. All right, number six. So we've said before that not every conversation ends up going into Beachbody, and some of them do. It's all about timing. It's all about timing. So number six, timing. You're not going to pitch sales randomly. You don't need to. If you've been doing everything I'm asking you to do, if you create this list and you're adding three to five new friends every day to your network and you're reaching out to them, so you go through that process, you add them, you stalk them, and then you reach out to them, right? If you're going through that process and you're truly networking with new people, you won't need to just randomly uh, bring up a sale. Because this is the thing, as much as you're watching them, they can see what you're doing too. The more you like their stuff and comment on it, the more your stuff goes through their newsfeed. And if then you're um, actively posting three to five times a day, sharing about the products, sharing about your journey, sharing healthy recipes, sharing about your upcoming challenge groups, sharing, 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 if you're doing that, if you're really truly doing that job, they're going to see it. And that is where sometimes people actually end, end up coming to you and saying, what's that challenge group that you're doing? I want to know more about that. Or what's that shake you've been drinking? And then they kind of reach out. So don't pitch a sale randomly. It doesn't feel good for you. It doesn't feel good for the person. Guarantee, honestly, random sales that I've pitched have usually gotten me not a sale. Usually the person doesn't respond. Interact and build a relationship. Get to know them. I've said this. So forming, this is the big thing. It's all about timing. So you've got to form the relationship. What does form mean? It's an acronym that means friends, occupation, um, relationships, and then your message. Okay? So, I'm sorry, recreation. Friends and family for the F. So you could talk to them about, like I say, talk to them about, oh, I see your babies in your picture. or Oh, your husband. When did you guys get married? I love your wedding pictures. Friends and family. Occupation. So what do you do for a living? Okay. Recreation. 
What do you like to do for fun? Or, oh, I saw you ran a 5K. Do you like running? That's easy. Okay, so you're going to go through those FORs, the friends and family, the occupation, the recreation. You're going to talk through those when you're talking to the person, when you message them. Okay, so you friend requested them, they accepted. You are talking to them, I'm sorry, you're liking and commenting on their stuff on social media for a couple of days. And when it feels right, when, when, if you think the timing is right, you send them a thank you for accepting my friend request the other day and then start forming the relationship. Don't get to M before you do the other things. Don't tell them your message before you know stuff about them. Because you don't know, it's so disrespectful. You don't even know if they need what you have. Remember, we have a solution to a problem, but the solution only works if they have that problem, right? They don't want your solution if they don't have that problem. Keep that in mind. Um, connect about things that you have in common when you're forming these relationships, you know? And that's kind of where I was saying earlier that, you know, not everybody is going to be a quality prospect or a quality customer or somebody that I really want. So find out what you have in common, and if you don't have a lot of things in common, whatever, move on, it's okay. At least you have a new friend. All right, when the timing is right, make sure that you offer outside tools. We can talk and we can talk and we can talk, and sometimes we over talk and we oversell things. So if they want information about something, you know, I might message them back and forth, but I will always send them to my job form because I want to get to know their goals. I want to know what kinds of workouts they like, and I want it to all be organized in one place. I want to know if a challenge group's even a right fit for them. So I send them to my job form, and I let them fill it out that way. After the job form, I'll respond in an email, and I'll talk about different, you know, I'll talk through what they said to me. I appreciate your honesty. You know, I love what you said about trying to get back into this routine. I love, you know, I know that you fell off the wagon, but I really believe that with this accountability and in, in these groups, you're really going to find a way to get back on. I see that you love kickboxing. Turbo Fire, Turbo Jam, those are both really great kickboxing um, programs that Beachbody sells. I'd love for you to check them out. Would you like to get more information on these programs? And then what I'll do is I'll take the YouTube promo because there's a promo video for every Beachbody workout. There's a video for it that just shows them what that, it's like the infomercial video, but condensed, you know? So what I'll do is I'll send them the links. You know, I'll give them a couple options, 21 Day Fix, Pio, Size, maybe those are their three options that they're trying to decide between. And I'll send them the YouTube link to all three of those promos and let them watch them for themselves, see what it's about. That way, I don't have to do the talking, okay? But I do also do the talking because on my website and on, um, on my blog, I do reviews of the programs. I'm using the programs. I'm showing people that I'm doing the programs, and I talk honestly about the programs, and I show befores and I show afters. So people can be educated about my programs based on my blogs. So if somebody wants to know more information about Pio, I can send them to my article and say, here, read um, through you know, my personal experience with Pio. And then they can read it for themselves and see if they connect with it the way that I did. On your website, they can also compare challenge packs. So I might send them to my Team Beachbody website and tell them to click on the Beachbody challenge portion. And then once they get there, they can compare challenge packs. They can click on Pio and they can click on 21 Day Fix and they can compare and see, you know, okay, this one involves this, this one involves this. I kind of like this about this one. That's going to be hard for me about this. And they can visually compare it right there. Another way to kind of just use outside tools, think, think outside the box. It doesn't all have to be on social media. Invite this person to go do something with you live. Maybe have them come over and do a, a 21 Day Fix workout with you. Have them come over and test it out with you. It's a new workout, buddy. You're planting a seed that this stuff is easy and can be done in the comfort of your own home and um, whatever. They got a workout in that day. Um, you can do shake and share events where you sh make Shakeology and you share it with people or make an extra shake and take it to work and let your coworker try it or make the protein balls and take them to work and put them out on the counter and let people taste the, the Shakeology protein balls that you make. Whatever. Think of creative ways, though, that you can use outside tools to reel people back in so that you don't have to do all the talking, okay? Because honestly, these programs and these products work. Let them speak for themselves. And um, I was kind of just trying to brainstorm, and I thought if somebody wants to know more about the coaching opportunity, a great outside resource is Super Saturdays because we have four Super Saturdays a year, 
and they're all around the nation. And it's just such a great way for people to see what Beachbody is all about. So take them with you to a Super Saturday. It's good for you because as a coach, you should be going to Super Saturday. And you can also be kind of recruiting new coaches for your own team in the process. All right, number seven. I'm going to get going because I'm getting, this one is long-winded tonight. Number seven, let people know what you offer and how it benefits their life. So we made our list. We're networking with a purpose and really reaching out to people. We're not being a hunter. We're being the farmer and cultivating and we're timing it out and forming this relationship. But, but when it comes to Beachbody, they've got to know that you're a Beachbody coach. They've got to know this. I mean, they have to know this because when it comes time to make a purchase, if they don't know you're a coach, they're going to go to someone else. So sharing three to five times on social media daily is non-negotiable. It's a must. It's so crucial because in that time, they're going to start associating you with those products. They're going to associate your story and your journey with those programs. So when they think, I need to lose weight like she did, or I want to get healthier like he did, they're going to remember your three to five posts a day. It might be annoying to them for like a period of time. Maybe they're not ready yet. And maybe they're bothered by it. Who cares? Because when they are ready to take that plunge, you are going to be the person that they're thinking of. Um, be knowledgeable about the products, guys. You got to be knowledgeable. So if you've been doing the same program since the day you started out as a coach, you got to change it up. First of all, I'm very proud of you because I don't know how you do it because I get bored out of my mind if I do the same thing over and over again. But second, you've got to change it up because you need to be uh, fluent in Beachbody if you're going to be a successful coach. I have success stories from Insanity, T25, 21 Day Fix, 21 Day Fix Extreme, Pio, Size, Shalene Extreme. I've done those seven programs from start to finish. In addition to those, though, I've also tested out ones in the um, Beachbody On Demand. So I have some knowledge about other programs just in case I've never done them. Also, when I have clients do a program that I've never done, like I've had people do 10-minute trainer and I've never done that one before and I've had people do slim in six, I make sure that I get a real good review from them. Like I tell them, listen, I've never done this one before and I've actually never had a client do it. So would you please do me the favor that when you're finished, could you like give me a really honest review about what you thought, the good, the bad, the ugly? I want to hear it all. That way I can be more knowledgeable the next time somebody wants to get this program. And every time, I've never had somebody not do that for me. They always give me the review and they let me know the good, the bad, the ugly. They let me know all about it. Um, what worked for them versus what didn't, what they liked, what they didn't. So make sure, don't feel, reach out to people and ask them um, about products that you haven't tried yet. But get out there and try more products. Get out there and try more products. I don't know any other way to say it, but you've got to be knowledgeable in what you're talking about because the more comfortable you are speaking about products, the more confident you appear and the more trust people are going to have in you. If people don't know if you know what you're talking about, they're not going to trust you. So you've got to understand that. Remember, put yourself in their shoes. If they don't trust you, they're not going to want to work with you. And um, transformations are so huge. So yours, your own. If you haven't showed off a transformation, if you don't even have a transformation yet, shame on you. You need one and you need one now. It, it's never too soon to show a transformation. It's never too soon. If you're not there yet, I hate to break it to you, but none of us are there yet. So show what you got. Show what you've been doing. Show off your hard work and be proud of it. Okay? Um, Grow your list of clients before and afters. So every time you have a client, you need to try to get their before and afters and get them see if they're comfortable with you using it for a Transformation Tuesday or on your blog or on your page. If they can use it, maybe what, you know, blur out their face or crop that off, whatever they want. Um, but in the, or even if it's just a quote about your groups. But ask your clients for that because that when it comes from someone else's mouth, sometimes it's like, oh, I guess... She isn't lying to us. She's not making this up. There's people out there who really believe in it. And then Beachbody has an awesome tool for you. So if you're like, Brittany, I don't really have a transformation yet, and um, I don't really have enough clients to have before and afters, well, Beachbody offers you amazing tools, don't they? On the webpage, every day in the blog, when you log in, the first thing you see is their transformations, is the challenge winners, right? Take one. Use it. It's there for you. All right, last thing. 
a couple rules that we have to follow. So the last part is these rules. These are rules, rules, rules that are going to be so important in dealing with networking and getting comfortable with networking. Rule number one, detach yourself emotionally from the results. When you're networking, you are networking because you want to form a relationship with somebody and you want to be a better friend and you want to offer them a service and a solution to a problem they might be having. But if people aren't ready for that service, if people don't want to be your friend, it's not in your hands. It's not anything you can control. And you've got to understand that. You can't control that. Control what you can control in this business. I can control that I add three to five new friends every day. I can control that I go and I like their things and comment on it. And I can control that I reach out and I tell them, thank you for accepting. Question, question, question. That's my control. After that, it's out of my hands. I can't control if they're going to respond. I can't control if they're going to unfriend me. I can't control any of that stuff. So we got to detach ourselves emotionally from any outcomes and results and just control what we can control. Number two, be you. Be you. There is nobody else like you. There will never, ever be anyone else like you. You've got to be incredibly, uniquely you. There is something special about you. There is a reason that people are attracted to you. You've got to be you because they don't want somebody else. And if they don't want you, you don't want them. So remember that. Be you. Number three, be passionate and enthusiastic about what you do because it's contagious. If, you know, you're telling people about these products and, yeah, I do 21 Day Fix. It's cool. Yeah, it's, yeah, shake all these. Yeah, it's good. I drink it. Yeah, I'm a coach. Yeah. Does that sound like something you want to do? <laughs> like, no, you've got to be enthusiastic about it. You've got to be passionate about what you do. You've got to let people know that this is like life changing stuff. And the people in your groups, they just, they melt your heart and they just make you so happy and they push you to be a better person. And, oh, it's just amazing, right? You've got to be passionate and enthusiastic about it because it's contagious and they're going to want, like, why is she so dang happy? I want to be happy like her. I'll join her challenge. That'll make me happy. It's contagious. Number four, be confident. We spoke about this a little bit ago, but yeah, you got to be confident because if you're not knowledgeable with, about the products, you're obviously not going to be very confident. Um, and confidence comes through knowledge and also practice. So you got to have the knowledge base, yes, but you also have to practice. Because the more and more you do these things, the more and more you get yourself out there and you talk to people, the easier and easier it is. And like that first one about detaching yourself from the results, it becomes less of a worry, honestly, because you're so used to being shut down and said no to. So it doesn't hurt so bad. All right. And the last thing, make networking a daily habit. Promise me now, before you get off this webinar, Go to Team Our Victory the second you're done listening to this and comment below that you promise to make this a part of your daily behavior, okay? Your daily behaviors as a Beachbody coach are really not that huge, so it's easy to say, I'm not going to do that one today. But let me tell you, friends, you've got to do the three to five new friend requests every day. And then the next day, you've got to do that same three to five friend requests, but go back and look at the day before and start engaging with those people. And the next day, duplicate it. And the next day, duplicate it. And it might be difficult at first to get into the habit of doing that. But once you make it a habit, it's really not so bad. Friend request, like, comment, reach out and message. Wash, rinse, repeat. You know what I mean? So make it a daily habit. Networking, guys, it's all part of the invitation process, but I don't want you to feel so intimidated by the fact that, like, I don't know who to invite. I don't know what to say. I hope that this helped you. I hope that you see what networking in Beachbody really means and how you can do that with, you know, your heart and your passion and your enthusiasm. All right, Team Our Victory, thank you so much. I know this was a really longer one tonight, but you know what? Networking is... It is what we do. It's what we do for a living. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you for being on and or listening to this recording. If you have any questions, by all means, post them in Team Our Victory, and uh, we'll chat there. Have a great night, everybody.